130,000 daily journeys made by bike in London. Over the years, since 2000, we've seen a 153% increase in cycling across all of London. But in central London, the story is even better. We've seen a 253% increase since 2000. And that is a direct result of the investment in the cycle infrastructure that we've been putting in around the city. So I've been cycling for about seven years in London and definitely the infrastructure has got better. The new routes have proven hugely successful in terms of increasing the number of riders and we are starting to see a change in the type of riders, getting more women, more children, older residents on bikes. I use it for about half a mile each day at the end of my commute and it just makes it easier, easier to share the space. So these uh, major cycling facilities are now in. They're working, they've made a really huge change in London, and they've made a huge change in the city of London. We have 40 miles of cycle superhighway rolled out at the moment. We're also building a quiet way network. That's just, those are smaller routes on some of the residential streets and back routes, allowing people to get around the city as part of their daily journeys. So what you can see behind me is a considerable difference physically. There's a big lane being created, four metres wide, for cyclists to go in both directions. And there are facilities there and, and curbs and islands and things to actually make sure there's physical segregation. That also provides occasional space for people who are crossing on foot to wait on. This is Blackfriars Bridge in the centre of London. You can see how protected the cyclists are away from the general traffic. On this route alone, at the busiest time of day, cyclists count for 70% of all the journeys going across this bridge. Compared with before this cycle lane was here, we've seen a 55% increase in the number of cyclists using this bridge on a daily basis. The London road network is very difficult to understand. Of so I think the biggest benefit for me of the cycle superhighways is that it gives you a point-to-point -point route network. So I know if I want to get from the center of the city out to the northwest, I can get on the superhighway and it's going to take me exactly radially where I want to go. London has many quiet streets that they are actually non 20 mile per hour or 30 kilometer per hour streets. When you use that street, you know it's a quiet street, normally residential, um, there's not much traffic, so you can actually make your way through the city most of the times by using low speed streets. I started to notice about 10 years ago that London was investing in quieter routes through neighborhoods throughout London and they would take streets that were formerly through streets and they would block them off except for a narrow passage for a bicycle and then they'd use that space for a small garden, uh, maybe benches or something like that. But what it did is it made the streets so peaceful that bicycling through those neighborhoods was really a joy. What you've seen actually happen organically already is counterflow cycle lanes have actually made things accessible. Where people are doing things illegally, they've now become part of the system and the planning and the observations that the planners have made have actually improved things. On the super highways, you tend to have to stay in in flow and yeah go at the speed the pace that everyone else is going at those big big bike lanes are really intense i mean people are biking fast they know where they're going there's an intensity on some of those things it's like people are trying to get to work this is not a leisurely thing cyclists tend to ride pretty fast on them and i can see that especially for an urban rider that's not highly experienced that that might be a bit of a challenge there's still a predominance of males riding uh, and people with drop handlebar bikes, people who want to cycle very quickly. But ultimately, here in the city, we're looking for something where actually everybody slows down. A good speed for vehicles and cycles to go is about 10 miles an hour, because the differential between them and someone who's walking along at three miles an hour and a pedestrian is actually more easy to kind of understand and deal with. Try and bring that civility and that calmness into people's journeys. Our road system actively excludes certain groups from taking part in active travel. We see fewer women, fewer older residents, and almost no children whatsoever able to cycle on our streets. And we think this is an issue of social justice. It's an issue of active travel for all. Um, and councils need to say, look, if active travel is important as part of a health strategy for the county,
capital, then how do we make sure it's available to everybody, not just the brave? When you have a bike lane and then it shifts to going in with the rest of the traffic, you have to be quite careful and I think that's when perhaps older people and people with children don't feel comfortable. We need to make sure that cyclists really reflect the diversity of London's communities. At the moment, sadly, they don't. And what we're doing is we're working with schools. Last year we trained over 40,000 children to cycle around, around London. We do the same thing with adults. 20,000 adults were trained so that they can cycle confidently and are familiar with London's infrastructure. We're working with community groups across the city. There has been some research in London in relation to the bike sharing schemes that they actually help to normalising cyclists because it's a way of cycling that is quite unpredictable. There are trips that sometimes are unplanned, so you might be dressing your normal clothing, no helmet, and you just grab a bike because that's the most convenient way of doing uh, a trip that you hadn't planned before. I rented one of the city bikes there and uh, it was really cheap. I think it was like two, two pounds for 24 hours. and. I felt like the bike was a way to like connect with other bikers. We've got record numbers of people hiring our Santander cycles. Last year over 10.6 million people used this as a way of exploring a great city. But what we're aiming for in our Mayor's Transport Strategy, the work that we're doing in London, is to radically change the way people move around our city, to shift it from 64% of people using bikes, walking and public transport to 80%. That's getting people out of their cars and using safer, more healthier and more sustainable modes of transport to get around the city. We've had far fewer vehicles during the day when most people are around. We've seen really big improvements in air quality at certain locations, uh, that's really good. People are having to change how they do things, uh, so we're working really hard with businesses and delivery companies to ensure that more deliveries happen at night. We'd like to see the mayor move faster now on getting the routes rolled out. The superhighways need to be rebranded as either bike boulevards or neighbourhood greenways and we also now need to see them across the city. Certainly many of the organisations and key opinion formers in places like the City of London are now calling for fantastic streets with far fewer vehicles, wonderful for people. Uh, many are badging this up as healthy streets. The Mayor of London is. Uh, it's a great term. We're doubling the amount of investment of the previous administration, investing on average about £169 million pounds per year in cycle infrastructure. Now that brings London up to the levels of infrastructure investment that we see in Copenhagen, in Amsterdam, really putting forward that London as a global, big global city will be at the forefront of cycle infrastructure going forward. I know we, we hold up the Mini Holland and the Copenhagen models as ways of doing things, but let's be honest, they've been doing it 40, 50 years. It takes time.